Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and fight the Fed. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how the Federal Reserve, aka the Fed funds rate, aka interest rates, pretty much dictate the stock market and they have since about 2007, 2008. Uh, so I'm gonna show you charts with basically what the Fed funds rate is on top of the S&P 500 index performance. Um, but before that, we need to understand what the Fed funds rate is. So if you guys aren't familiar, this is pretty much a indicator uh, it's a, f a target rate or a target interest rate set by the FOMC, which is the Federal Open Market Committee, at which commercial banks borrow and lend their excess reserves to each other overnight. Uh, this is basically the Fed saying, uh, hey, JP Morgan, uh, hey, Bank of America, hey, you know, these big commercial banks, here's the rate at which you're going to get money lent to you, meaning that you need to make the difference when you loan it out to Bob and Jane on their mortgage or their car loan, for example. So if the Fed funds rate is, let's call it 1%, they're obviously going to make the difference by lending it out to the consumer or commercial paper or commercial clients at a higher um, percentage rate. So that's pretty much banking uh, business model in a nutshell here um, for the sake of this video. So if we get into a chart here, the effective federal funds rate, um, this is the St. Louis Federal Reserve website. It's the uh, fred.stlouisfed.org website. You can see here that the Fed funds rate in this chart goes all the way back to 1954, which we can see in the bottom left-hand side of our screen where my cursor is. So you can see what the exact percentage interest rate is based on the y-axis over here. So y-axis is going up and down, x-axis is going horizontal. Uh, you can see they pretty much peaked in 1981 when interest rates were 19.1% and probably even higher to the consumer. Uh, this is when mortgages were crazy, right? And ever since then, we've started to gradually decline. So if you look at all these uh, bars right here, these gray bars, those pretty much indicate recessions. I mean, they, they do indicate recessions. Uh, we had one in the early 90s. We had one in the early 2000s with the dot-com bubble. Uh, we had a big one in 2007 to 2009 uh, with the great financial crisis. Uh, and then we had a little blip right here, if you can see right underneath me, uh, which was the Cervasa sickness in March of 2020. So if you go into, uh, I'm going to show you a bar chart with basically the Fed funds rate plotted on top of the S&P 500, uh, which is the blue line here and the red lines here. Uh, but I do want to zoom in just a little bit. And I'm going to use uh, this website just because it's much more responsive than the other one. So if you look at the Fed funds rate, you can see here, uh, let me just pick the year 2000. That'll probably be uh, the easiest. So if I pick 2000 in July, you can see here that interest rates were at 6.5% in August of 2000. And when the dot-com bubble happened, uh, we're going through an economic crisis, you can see here that we had to plunge rates all the way down to basically 1% in July of 2003. Or, or December of 2003, if you want to move forward a little bit. At that point, the economy started to recover. So we raise rates, raise rates, raise rates. We taper off right around 5.25%. And then all of a sudden, uh, the great financial crisis happens. Things started to stir in the summer of 2007. Um, I remember this because I was in college. This was my uh, freshman or sophomore year. I can't remember exactly. And you can see this huge gray bar indicating the great financial crisis. And basically, ever since January of 2009, we've been in a in ZERP, zero interest rate policy environment, meaning uh, the Fed's funds rate, you can see here, is 0 0.15. And this continued all the way until November of 2015. And the Fed started to raise rates just a little bit from here on out. So uh, they started to basically max out right around December 2018, January 2019, all the way through July. And they had to drop them because of Cervasa sickness all the way back down to uh, 0 0.05. Uh, I think these are like historically the lowest uh, Fed, uh, Fed funds rates ever recorded. So the reason I'm showing you all this is because my huge macro thesis, um, again, I've been investing in the stock market since I was 18 years old. Uh, that's 2006. Uh, I've been investing for a very long time, but it's pretty much been in one of the longest bull markets in history. Okay, I got my teeth kicked in when I was young and then it's been nothing but you know gain since then. So the reason I want to show you this is because one of my big thesis theses thesis is I don't even know what the plural of thesis is um, but my thesis for the most part is that interest rates dictate asset prices and this is pretty much common knowledge. Uh, we're obviously at all-time high real estate prices because of low interest rates. Uh, we're at all-time high stock market prices because of um, 
part, partly due to inflation, partly due to high, uh, low interest rates. But if you look here, you can see ever since the dot-com bubble um, is pretty much when all this started. So you see the red, again, is the federal funds rate, and then the blue line is the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in America. Um, and you can see here that once they start to lower rates, the market will bottom out, and then uh, the index will start to climb, 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 climb. And when the rates hit a peak again, you either go through a recession or they have to taper off. And they'll do so as long as the economy is doing fine. Uh, the thought behind this is that cheap, low interest rates or cheap money uh, stimulates the economy. It lets people borrow. It lets companies borrow. It lets people buy back their stock. Uh, companies buy back their stock, which uh, thus increases the um, value of their shares. So you can see here ever since 2009, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we've pretty much been in ZERP. And the S&P 500 has done nothing but go up. The last time we tried to max out these interest rates were pretty much in uh, 2018, 2019. And we had a huge crash in December of 18, if you guys remember that from about uh, two, three years ago. Ever since then, uh, we started to taper off a little bit. We went through a big recession. And as you can see here, boom, zerp again. And if you look at what the market did, it's pretty much been a straight shot up. And we've also printed trillions of dollars. So it's been nothing but pretty much monetary methadone. So the entire point of this video is to tell you that you can understand the game that's going on and you can understand the game that's being played. And you don't have to be some, you know, Peter Schiff gold bug, or you don't have to be some guy that has all of his net worth and, uh, you know, cash under his mattress and buried in his backyard with the gold coins and things like that you can still understand the game that's being played and profit from it. So the final point to this video, what I'm trying to tell you is, is that the most important person in the world, literally the world, is Jerome Powell, okay? That's the president of the Federal Reserve. And the reason I'm showing you this screen is because this is the 2021 Federal Open Market Committee meetings. This is when they meet, okay? They meet multiple times a year. Last time they met was at the end of July. Next time they're gonna meet is September 21, 22. And whatever they say in these meetings directly impacts what the market does, okay? Because if they say in September 20, uh, 21st of this year, they're going to say, hey, we're raising the federal funds rate to 5%. What do you think the market's going to do? It's obviously going to crash or spike down. So the whole point of this is to obviously dollar cost average if you are index fund investing. Uh, but if you are trading like SPY or the S&P 500 or options, for example, these federal open market committee dates are very, very important, okay? Because one little uh, piece of sentiment uh, can pretty much you know spoil the whole party. So I hope this uh, video was enlightening. This has been one of my theses or theses. Uh, all the people in the comments, Marco, how do you not know it's blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Relax, dude. Okay, chill out. Um, so anyway, this has been my thesis for many, many years now. Um, and as long as the Fed says they aren't raising rates, I'm happy to dollar cost average into, you know, broad based index funds. And I've been very happy with that. Um, but at the end of the day, if they say they're raising rates like crazy, which I think the next time is going to be in 2023, that's when you should start to be aware and have your spidey senses going as to what you want to do with your money. So as always, I hope you got value out of this video. This, is, this was a pretty quick one, but a pretty valuable one. Um, and at the end of the day, always share this video with your friends and to anyone else that you think would get value from it. Thank you so much and have a prosperous day. Let me just show you a quick tweet from my buddy, Charlie. Uh, you can see here stocks, all time highs, home prices, all time highs, job openings, all time highs, wages, all time highs, core inflation highest since 91, which is true. Uh, and the Fed goes, we need 0% rates through at least 2023 and trillions more in bond buying to boost asset prices and increase inflation. Uh, so this isn't a fear mongering channel. Uh, just do what you got to do. <clears throat> Bye, Bitcoin. Bitcoin.